when I grew up, we thought we had written our new Dunbar because we recited his poetry when we jumped over Dutch. Mm -hmm. Seen my lady home last night. Jump back, honey, jump back. Well, I held her hand and I squeezed it tight. Jump back, honey, jump back. Heard her sigh, a little sigh, and seen the light gleam from her eye, and a smile go tickling by. Oh, jump back, honey, jump back. We jumped double dutch to that, and we got to the jump back, the person in would jump out, the other person would jump in. We thought we'd put that together. We didn't know that was Paul Lawrence Dunbar. <laughs> <laughs> An angel robed in spotless white, bent to kiss the sleepy night. Night woke to blush, but the spirit was gone. Men saw the blush and called it dawn. I love that poem because the eye was the beautiful night. And the tall angel, I could just see this beautiful black angel bending down to give night a kiss. Oh, and she blushed and it was dawn. Oh, I just had beautiful visions of this, my first love affair was with an angel written by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Others grew up loving him. Maya Angelou wrote her autobiography and named it after the first line of his poem, Sympathy. I know why the caged bird sings and beats his bars and would be free. It is not a carol of joy or glee, but a Prayer that upward to heaven he flings, oh, I know why the caged bird sings. So naturally, let's fast forward. I'm teaching eighth grade English. <laughs> and I want to give my students Paul Lawrence Dunbar. But when I go to the library, there's not a biography about him, not for young readers. So I thought, well, I know they have one at the St. Louis Public Library. So I went there. No juvenile biography. Well, I was put out. You mean to tell me they don't have a book about Paul Lawrence Dunbar in the library? What's wrong with these people? Why, what, where is it? You know, somebody needs to write a book about Paul Lawrence Dunbar. You know, the, the kids could really use a book about Paul Lawrence I know why they haven't written a book about Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Oh, I talked and whined and moaned and groaned why there was not a book about Dunbar. Until one day, a little boy said, why don't you write it yourself? Well, easier said than done. I'd never written a book before. I didn't know where to start. But I knew, to go, I knew where to go to find out. And I did, went to the library again, found a book, not a very imaginative title, How to Write a Children's Book. <laughs> <laughs> but it was what I needed. And I read that book from cover to cover, and I was prepared to write my book. Fred and I even got in the car and drove up to Dayton, Ohio. And we went to the Dunbar house and we saw where he wrote it. We saw his yard and we saw where his little puppy and the little black chicken had wrote up on his shoulder. We saw all and read about all of that. And we learned that he walked to school with the Wright brothers of flight, okay? And that he worked at the Chicago World's Fair where he wrote his first poem. Oh, I couldn't wait to get back to write about Paul Lawrence Dunbar, but I was so careful that everything in that book had to be accurate because I'm writing nonfiction. So when I finished, I gave it to a teacher friend. She read it and said, it's good. Okay, I took her word for it. <laughs> and here I go to class and I gave it to my students and they read it and said, Miss McKissick, who wrote this? <laughs> I wrote it, Joshua. <laughs> Mercifully, I had not put my name on it. They said, it's so boring. <laughs> Students.
students will tell you the truth. <laughs> they didn't like it. It was nothing but dry facts. I didn't tell a story. It's okay to have a story in a fiction book. You can tell a story with the facts the same way that you tell a story that's fictional. The only thing with writing nonfiction is that you can't make up details. But you can tell a good story if you dig enough into the person's life and find out those wonderful stories. But I left out all the good parts about him walking to school with the Right, brothers? Now that piqued their interest immediately. He did. That's what I should have put in there, but I was so busy trying to figure out the date he was born, and they're going to forget that in the morning. <laughs> They'll know enough to remember to put it on a test, but they're going to remember the stories about him. And so that's a promise I made myself to strive not to write a boring nonfiction book. To always remember your young readers and to give them something to hold on to when they read that book. And the best thing is for a story. Give them a story. Let me give you one about Paula and Spencer. And see, you'll remember this when you forget that he was born June 26, <laughs> 1872. It's good to know it, but I mean, you'll remember this story the next time you see his name. Matilda and John Dunbar had three sons, and they had all been born in slavery. And they had not gotten to name their children, the master named their children. But this child, this child born in freedom, they were going to get to name. And not only were they going to name just a child that was free, they wanted to give him a name that he would grow into because he was going to grow into a great whatever he chose to be because he was free. And so Matilda said, let's name him Paul after the Apostle Paul. Well, they liked that. That was beautiful. And then she said, you know, there's a name I saw on a book. And I couldn't read, but it was on the book. And I put the letters in my head in the order that they appeared. And I kept that word until I got to someone who could tell me what it was. And it was Lawrence. So it was on a book. I like to name him Lawrence. I kept it for this day. And John said, that sounds good. And his name will be Dunbar, a name that I took for myself. After a man I loved and respected. And so he will be named Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Isn't it amazing? He was named after two writers. And he became the first African American writer to make his living as a writer. Paul Lawrence Dunbar, a poet to remember. It was the first book I disciplined myself to write. And it set me on the way of writing nonfiction books about Frederick Douglass, Soldier of Truth, Days of Jubilee, The End of Slavery, the Civil Rights Movement in America from 1865 to present. All of those books grew out of that experience of writing my first book about Dunbar and pledging to young readers that I knew and don't know that I would not or I would try desperately not to write a boring nonfiction book. <laughs>